Hello and welcome back to the Red Dwarf Series 11 Audio Only My Thoughts Extravaganza Spectacular Thing. Uh, so, Episode 3, Give and Take. Um, this episode was, uh, I think, the first episode since Series 6 that really felt like a Red Dwarf episode to me. Um, I mean, some bits in other series had, like, parts, but this one felt like something we would have gotten in the first couple seasons if they had a big enough budget to accommodate the craziness. Um, so, the basic plot of the episode is, uh, they go to a ship, and Lister gets his kidneys stolen by a robot, and then the kidneys are destroyed. So the only way to save him is to get a donation from the only other humanoid on Red Dwarf, who happens to be the most selfish and vain being in the galaxy, the cat. And Lister has to get his uh, kidney. But that's not really the plot of the episode, but it is a very good misdirection because it takes everything you think and then it just takes one tiny line from the beginning of the episode, and that's how they save the day. Uh, in fact, they take many tiny lines from the beginning of the episode. So, uh, spoilers uh, ahead. I'm going to go into territory of stuff that was not in the synopsis that you can find on Wikipedia. So, they end up on this ship, uh, and they find... Uh, a, me a crazy medical droid, and they find this snack-dispensing robot who Rimmer and Crichton think is a medical droid, but in fact the medical droid is the one that uh, steals Lister's kidneys, and then they escape, and it blows up, and the droid's gone. So they, ha they think that they can rewrite the cat's DNA, which is a very interesting uh, concept, because... Obviously, the cat would be incompatible because he's not really a human. He is a felis sapien. He evolved completely differently. He just happens to look like a human. Um, so, there's a lot of funny scenes involving Lister trying to get the cat to agree and the cat being super selfish. And the best part is, they didn't even dial it up for the episode. Like, most of the time, you would think that it's like, oh... They have to make him selfish, so he acts, like, super selfish in this episode. But everything he does is completely concurrent with his character. Yeah, maybe it's more concurrent with, say, his character in Confidence and Paranoia, when he kept faking Rimmer out when Rimmer wanted to save Lister from his, uh space disease that he contracted and he and he keeps pretending to get up and going back to his fish. Uh, but still, um... And uh, I thought the, ep the episode was really good. They had a lot of funny jokes. Um, uh, and I'm going to spoil one here. So I'm just going to say, don't watch, the don't listen to this until you've seen the episode. There's a reason why I'm releasing these videos after the episode comes out, like, on TV. Because, um, you know, I, I could do it. I could, you know, I could, I, I watch it online, so I could watch it day of, get all the stuff, but I'm, I'm waiting until, you know, everyone has, has seen it, uh, so I don't spoil anyone, but there's this really funny joke when they find out that they can't make cat, the cat's DNA compatible, and Crichton says, uh, without the, without the ability to rewrite the cat's DNA, his kidneys will not be compatible with Mr. Lister's like VHS and Betamax, or the Catholic Church and science, and I started dying. Um, I'm gonna go out, I'm just gonna come out and say this. Uh, I'm agnostic, so I, I, I know that technically means you're not sure, but my definition, uh, is that I believe that there might be a god, but I also really don't like organized religion because I feel like all organized religion is used for is so that people can do terrible things to other people. So I, I don't want to get involved with that. Uh, but anyway, so I thought that I thought that joke was really, really, really funny. Um, 
And there was also something cool. Uh, we actually got more talk about the stasis booths in this episode uh, because that factors in. Uh, in the beginning, uh, when Rimmer is waiting for an elevator, uh, the elevator mentions stopping on the stasis booth deck, which is cool because we haven't really seen the stasis booths or even heard about them since uh, Future Echoes, I think. Like, 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 actually talked about them in the context of using them. Obviously, we heard that Lister was uh, in, what had went into stasis. Obviously, he talks about that, and they had the stasis booths on the uh, Era space station in Series Ten. But other than that, like on Red Dwarf, we haven't seen them. Uh, the episode had a lot of funny moments, and it was, it took a lot of sci-fi conventions, turned them on its head. It was. Just like the old uh, Red Dwarf, like how it was in the beginning, like, um, it was, dare I say, fantastic. Uh, I thought it was, it was really good. There were a lot of really good bits, um, funny jokes, all, all the actors really nailed their parts. There, there was a funny scene that was released in one of the trailers, um, which was... Crichton saying that he deleted all information that he uh, found frivolous and idiotic, and then when Rimmer comments on it, Crichton turns to him and says, and you are? Which, I knew it was going to be funny, but the continuation was even funnier, because we basically got um, a sort of rehash of the silly old trout joke from Polymorph where Crichton is extremely apologetic to Rimmer for saying something mean to him that he didn't completely intend. Um, you know, and it was so much better than the, you know, stuff from Series 7 with the, you know, the, you're lying, which was just so annoying. I hated, like, honestly, I think that's a big part of why I hated Kachansky, because she caused those episodes to happen. Crichton was talking about her, which just made me subconsciously put all the hate on her because I couldn't bring myself to hate Crichton. Um, and uh, there were a lot of good bits with the cat. The cat has really been given a lot of time to shine because he, he had basically become a periphery character starting in, like, series four or five. And, he, you know, I feel like he's back to being how he was in the first two series. like. He, like how he was doing those things in, uh, like rollerblading around looking for lady cats and stuff. I feel like he's becoming a more part of the focus than he has been, uh, since then, which is good. I was very happy with that. Um, but I, I liked the episode a lot. It was a very, very good episode. Um, like I want to talk about it more, but I, I, I don't want to spoil everything. And also, uh, I, I, you know, I, I don't want to basically turn this into just a summary. I want to just, you know, talk about like stuff I like. I only mentioned those little jokes because they were parts that I wanted to talk about because I, how, how I thought they were really good. Um, and yeah, I mean, this episode, I think so far is my favorite. Um, and I don't know why exactly, uh, like, Twenica was good, Samsara was good, but this one felt like the most Red Dwarf that an episode has felt in a while. And that's saying something, because both Twentica and Samsara felt like Red Dwarf, but this even more so. And if the quality keeps climbing during this series, Series 11 might be the best series, unless Series 12 happens to surpass it. So, um... Yeah, so I I definitely give this one so far uh, a higher score. I would say Twenica was like nine, Samsara was an eight, and then this is just a ten. And I'm hoping the next episode will be an eleven. Um, so yeah, so those were my thoughts. I thought uh, Give and Take is a very good episode, very very reminiscent of early Red Dwarf. Highly recommend uh, that this episode more than the other two uh, that you check out because it's a very good Red Dwarf episode and has a lot of good sci-fi conventions being flipped. Uh, so, yeah. 
So those are my thoughts. Uh, uh, if you enjoyed this video, you can see a bunch more videos about Red Dwarf on my channel, including uh, my video on Red Dwarf Series 8 that I did a couple weeks back, which now, uh, as I'm recording this, has about 610 views, and that I hope will continue to climb because that is my highest watched video I've ever made. And I wanted to talk about that at some point, so I put it here. So, uh, yeah, so, like I said, if you want to watch more, uh, videos, you can check out the rest of the videos on my channel. I talk about other stuff besides Red Dwarf, although I'm assuming you're probably here because of Red Dwarf. Uh, so, I do have a couple other Red Dwarf videos, uh, but mostly other things. So, uh, those were my thoughts. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you come back next time for my thoughts on the next episode of Red Dwarf Series 11, which, if I remember, is going to be Officer Rimmer. I think it's Officer Rimmer, although I'm not sure. I'm going to double-check that uh, right now. Uh, yes, the next episode coming out uh, is Officer Rimmer, which just sounds like a fun episode. So I will see you then. See you next time. Thank you all for watching, and if you liked the video, you can hit subscribe and watch one of my other videos. My videos can be found at any of these fine sites, and if you want to help out, maybe consider supporting the show on Patreon. See you next time.